So you wanna buy the Frame TV by Samsung. In this video, we're gonna go through each year of the Samsung the Frame, and you can decide for yourself which version is right for you based on the price and some of the tech features. So for myself, I have the 2020 version, and I have loved the TV. It has been so great for me, and I highly recommend it. I would even recommend the 2020 version. I'm gonna be happy with it for a long time. What you get is an amazing TV. The bezels are a little bit thicker in this one compared to the newer versions, but it's completely acceptable by my standards because of that no gap wall mount. It is amazing. Like the nice advantage of buying these TVs is you'd have the no gap wall mount and it looks way better than any other TV on a wall. And no matter how thick it is, having it just exactly no gap, it just looks amazing. This is the TV here and it looks great. It has 4K, it has 120 Hertz, picture quality is acceptable and audio is fine. I don't have a sound bar on mine and I think it's acceptable. It's not any movie theater experience, but it's, I, I've had no complaints. I haven't really desired to get a sound bar. You can put up art and my art looks amazing on it. Sarah and I always have different art pieces going on the frame TV. And it's really cool to see like pictures of my cats, going to see pictures of family, going to like going on a vacation and putting photos from your vacation on there. Super cool. And all versions of the TV have that option for you. So you're not gonna be disappointed that way. The nice thing with the QLED technology is that the screen burning isn't an issue compared to some OLED TVs that try to mimic the same functionalities of the frame TV. So I've had this for over a year. It's been fine. I've really enjoyed it. and. I'm planning on having the TV last quite a bit longer for myself. If you want to watch more content about the Frame TV from the 2020 version, you can watch my other videos in the playlist called The Frame. So then we move up in the world to the most current version right now, which is the 2021 version. And they made some pretty big improvements that I really enjoyed. They really made it significantly thinner. So right now the TV is, it's fine, but it's not, it doesn't, it doesn't look thin. If someone was to walk in your house, they wouldn't really think of it as a picture frame. It's just a little bit too thick, but with the bezels on it, it looks fine. But this one, they really improved it, trying to make the bezels a little bit thinner. So I was super impressed with how much thinner the TV got, but other than that, all the functionality that I desired was pretty much the same. It was still the frame TV. I could still put my art on and the thinness wasn't really a deal for me. So if that was a big issue for you and you could save a few hundred bucks, the 2020 version is probably a better bet than the 2021 version for yourself. This is a great example of the no gap wall mount. It is amazing how thin it gets to your wall. And this is with an even thinner TV. It just looks so impressive that you can't even see where it is. So you get all the same functionality, the one connect invisible line and the one connect box, super useful for this TV. Uh, if, if you don't know that the, the TV brains is in the one connect box and then it just powers it with a nice line to the TV. So you don't have to have all the brain power behind the TV or behind the wall. So you look at some of these pictures and you look at the TV that's in my house, it looks pretty much the same, some cool new additions, but really is it a big improvement? Not really. So I wasn't too impressed with this. Like, yeah, it's cool, it's thinner. If I was buying a brand new TV, maybe I'd think about it. But if I could save 400 bucks on the older version, it's not a huge deal to me. But there is a new version coming out this year, the 2022 version, and that has some really big improvements and stuff that I got super excited about. So the really cool thing about the Frame TV in 2022 is that they have a matte finish on the TV. So it makes art look a lot more like art compared to the TV that I have. And I will say that I do get glare on the TV and these new TVs are drastically reducing that, which is a huge improvement and something that I really would like because sometimes when the sun is setting, the TV does have a lot of glare from the windows. And if I wanted to watch anything or have my art displayed, it's gonna be noticeable and I'm gonna see those glares. So Samsung has this really cool video trying to really show off the glare. I don't think it's this drastic for my 2020 version, but it is making a point that the frame in 2022 is gonna be a lot better for not having that reflective glare. This is a huge deal for the TV because you don't really need this TV to be the highest quality. You need it to be good quality, but you're not looking for it to be the best picture screen quality. You're looking for it to be great for art. And with this, it's exactly doing that and it's making amazing art on your TV that you can constantly change out. So it introduces an anti-reflective film and other anti-glare measures. Samsung hopes that this is gonna make the oil paintings and other art pop off the screen to a more impressive extent than before. So I haven't had a chance to look at this personally, but based on what they're saying, this is a huge improvement to any degree because I've been super satisfied with what Samsung The Frame has from the 2020 version. 
And with this anti-glare stuff, it's only gonna get better. Any reduction in glare and any addition to make the TV look less like a TV is, I'm all for it. So the TV will start at 32 inches in the 2022 version, and it will top out it with 85 inches, which is pretty sweet. You get a huge extensive variety. It's a 4K TV, 120 Hertz, just like what I have on my TV from 2020. So if you really want a high quality image and you want to be watching some cool Netflix videos with high quality Dolby Vision, just go get the OLEDs from LG. They're amazing. Um, they're going to do exactly what you want for high quality. These TVs are not for that. They're for lifestyle TVs where you can have them in the background and have them look amazing. If you want that best quality, just go get the OLEDs or these new Samsung Neo QLED TVs, which are gonna be a huge improvement from these lifestyle TVs called the frame. So you have to decide for yourself if the value of that coating outweighs the cost of the more expensive price tag. So for myself, if I was buying a new TV right now, I would heavily consider that matte finish because I'm putting it in my main living room and I would really think that that would be an advantage for me because I want that TV to not look like a TV when I'm not using it. And that's something that is a huge upgrade. So to be honest, 2021 version, the thinness is nice to have, not a huge deal because of the no gap wall mount. So if you could find a 2020 version or a 2021 that was heavily discounted, maybe go for that. If you don't have the budget, you're still gonna get a great TV. But if you have the money saved up, the 2022 version looks really awesome and has a ton of potential. And I would heavily wait for that to come out because that's something I really want with this TV. Otherwise, I just buy a TV a third or a quarter of the price and just be happy with it because this is a lifestyle TV and you're paying a lot more for it. But ultimately, after a year and a half of having the TV, I've loved it and I would buy it again. I wanna help you out just like I would my brother. I'll see you in the next video.